Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I've got three ground beef recipes. I'm gonna start categorizing my videos a little more like this, just so you guys can search it if you want, you know, chicken breast recipes or whatever. I feel like that's probably a great way for you guys to find what you need on my channel. A few new changes is that I'm going to be using my own recipes from now on. I had been doing some that were linked to other people's recipes, but now I'm only doing my own. So all of the ingredients and instructions will be below in the description box you can find them for all the recipes that will be shown in my videos also there'll be links there that you guys can click on and it'll take you right to Pinterest and you will have a pin that you can pin it right on Pinterest to your Pinterest board so you can also categorize it that way and I'm adding timestamps to the description box so if you're looking for one specific recipe you can head down there and you'll be able to quickly click on the timestamp and jump right to that portion of the video one other thing before we jump in and get started that I wanted to mention is I'm also adding recipes to Instagram so if you guys don't follow me over there I'm going to be adding recipe videos there as well so if you're looking for even more recipe inspiration or more ways to access my content that is where you'll be able to find it. So I've got my cup of coffee made as usual and I'm so excited to share with you the recipes I have for today and let's jump in and get started. The first recipe we're starting off with today is a healthy shepherd's pie. This will be super friendly to people that need gluten-free things in their life and it's just really delicious this way. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is heat your oven to 400 degrees and then you're going to want to rinse down your head of coffee cauliflower. After you do that, you'll fill a pot of water and put it on the stove to boil. So you want to get the water boiling before you drop the cauliflower into it. It's kind of like blanch the cauliflower. Next, you'll just chop up the cauliflower into um, pieces that will fit into the pot of boiling water. And then you want to peel up your carrot and dice it up small. You're also going to take your onion and dice it up to the same size as the carrots. Once your water is to a boil, drop the pieces of cauliflower into the water and set a timer for 10 minutes. In an oven safe skillet, you're gonna drizzle some olive oil and put in your diced up veggies. Once the 10 minutes is up with your cauliflower, you wanna dump it into a strainer. And then I just used a canning jar to try to squeeze as much of the water out of it as possible. You just wanna get it to a point where your mashed up cauliflower for the top of the shepherd's pie is not going to be runny. Once you've squeezed as much out as you can, you can put it back into the pot that you boiled it in. Once your veggies are getting soft and all cooked up, you can add in some garlic. And then I threw a little bit of water in just to cook them up a little bit faster. You'll want to clear your oven safe skillet of all of your little veggies, but definitely leave the scraps in there because that gives the meat an extra good flavor. And then you'll put your pound of ground beef into the skillet. You guys know if you've been watching my channel for a long time that for the most part I always shred my own cheese. I don't buy pre-shredded cheese so I definitely did it for this recipe and it melts so much better. Once your meat is all cooked up you will re-add the veggies back in and stir it together. Add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce and I know I don't always say that right but that's how we say it around here and you'll want to get all of the flavors combined. Also, you'll want to add in your tomato paste and a little bit of some beef broth. And then just really let that simmer, let all those flavors cook together. And that's what the bottom layer of the shepherd's pie is made of. Now going back to the topping, 
And back to your cauliflower, you wanna add in the cream cheese, and then I like to use an immersion blender to really get it smooth. You could easily use a potato masher and kind of do the same thing that you would do with mashed potatoes. Then I add in some salt, pepper, and about half of the shredded cheese. You want the other half for the topping, but I like a little bit of the shredded cheese in with the mashed cauliflower mixture. Once most of the liquid has cooked through the meat so it's kind of not so runny anymore, you want to turn your heat down on the stove and you are going to go ahead and flatten out the meat and then put dollops of the mashed cauliflower all over the top of it and then smooth it out. Next, you'll add the remaining shredded cheese, and then I like to put a little bit of green onion on top just to give it another color. You're gonna bake it. All of the instructions are below, and whenever it comes out, it is just gorgeous, and it's a full meal right in one pan, which is one of my favorites, especially as a mom. It just cuts down on so much extra work whenever you can put your protein and your veggie all into one dish. The next recipe is a spinach and artichoke stuffed pepper and oh these are so good. I think this was my favorite meal out of these ground beef meals. It was so delicious. So you're going to start out with two pounds of ground beef in the frying pan and then I went ahead and rinsed down my bell peppers. You can use any color you like. You're going to take the middle part of the bell peppers out and just clean them up a little bit and cut each of them in half. Next, you'll take your can of artichoke hearts and put that out on your cutting board and just chop it up to bite-sized pieces. Once the meat is all cooked up in the pan you're gonna go ahead and add the cream cheese in let it sit there and get some heat on it so that it starts to melt and you'll easily be able to mash it in to the ground beef Next, we'll sprinkle a fourth cup of shredded parm. This is one of my absolute favorite ingredients to use in the kitchen, is fresh shredded parm. You're gonna add in your sour cream and a little bit of mayo. It just really gives a great creamy consistency to this dish. And then you're gonna add in the spinach and artichoke, stir it all together, get all those flavors combined, and you can let it cook a little bit, but since it'll be baking in the oven, you don't really have to worry about it sitting on the stove for very long. The last two steps before you stuff your peppers are to add in a little bit of garlic and then about half of the shredded mozzarella. So you wanna stir that all together. Like I said, it's gonna get baked so you don't have to worry about the cheese getting fully melted. You just want to combine everything. Before you put your peppers in the pan, you do wanna give it a nice coat of cooking spray just to make sure that your pan isn't impossible to wash when it's all done. Once your peppers are stuffed, you can go ahead and top it off with the remaining mozzarella cheese and pop them in the oven at 400 degrees.
The third recipe for today is some ground beef stroganoff, and this is so simple. I definitely think this is the easiest recipe out of all three of these. So, so simple, and if you're a mushroom lover, you will love this. So you wanna put a drizzle of olive oil in the pan and go ahead and add some butter, and then throw your sliced mushrooms in there. I actually like to get mine pre-sliced. It just saves me one step in the kitchen, and you'll also wanna add your sliced onion. Today I'm going to be using some spaghetti squash to kind of hold the base of all of this. You could definitely use traditional noodles. This is just one little extra healthy step. And a way to remember how to cook a spaghetti squash is put them face down at 400 degrees for 40 minutes. Once your mushrooms have softened up and your onions are getting a little bit clear looking, you can scoop them out of the pan and this all this just makes the pan, adds an extra flavor to your ground beef. So you are going to put your pound of ground beef into the frying pan and brown it or just get it really cooked up before you add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so with this next step of adding the coconut flour, you can also add gluten-free flour, regular flour. They will get the consistency a little bit thicker, but I was going for something pretty clean, pretty healthy. So I went ahead and used some coconut flour and it just gave it a little bit more body. And then I also added in a Worcestershire sauce and the rest of the veggies mixing well. Then you'll just go ahead and top your cooked spaghetti squash with the stroganoff. It is so delicious. It also reheats really well for lunches or if you wanted to use it later in the week. Thank you guys so much for watching today let me know what you think of this style video since it's a little different from what I normally do and don't forget to leave a comment subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys in my next video